Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Hey, the top end of Stevenson! Welcome to Football Daft, the daftest Scottish football podcast around. I'm Stephen Purden and let's welcome the team. First, a man who claims to have seen the image of Ninja Turtles in a bear's fur. I didn't see it, man. It's Chris Toll. Did you see the tweet that I put? Oh, I, I seen it, but I didn't see the Ninja Turtle. I, I circled it on a reply and fucking... No, no, but I was watching Homeland and I paused it and it actually wasted about 15 minutes of my night trying to find a fucking Ninja Turtle in the bear's fur. Well, what the fuck are you talking about? Is this a private joke now since I've been oh. off? Mate, it was in the group chat, mate. Oh, no, it was in the group listen, chat. Here's my, here's my rant, right? Here's my rant about the group chat, right? Yeah, right, right, right. right, I right, mean, okay. right. And knew a man who didn't realise that GOAT meant greatest of all time. So when he saw a wrestling fan holding a sign declaring that he was the GOAT, he called the fan a prick. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, <laughs> <laughs> no way. I was I was a, a taping with TNA and uh, I came out and I was I seen Gradle as GOAT and I went, cheeky bastard. <laughs> They went right up, they went right into his face and went, fuck, gave him the thing and all that, but he was smiling and stuff like that. When I was going, fucking prick, and I went backstage, I'm going, some kind of they're calling me a goat and all that. Dude, it's greatest of all time. Oh, I feel terrible, man. Are you kidding me on? <laughs> I mate, didn't know. Honestly, this was years ago, mate. How do you get through a day? <laughs> I wish I ran about a group chat, I want to hear that. Listen, is she, uh, listen I'm in a, a millions of group chats, right? And see your football Yo, daft one, man. Yo, man. I'm not into memes and stories and gifs and all that. Just get a buy. Gifs, no gifs. Gifs. Right. Right. Come in and there's 200 unread messages. And I don't know what's happening to the show because it's it's fucking memes. Memes. Do you know what? You know what? Like, Those face. See, see, Grado, right? Last night, we're sitting texting back and forward. No, don't say that because I've no text back to yet. To oh. to text last week. Grado always fucking... Absolutely pounds you with about a million voice notes when you just sat down on the couch at like 10 o'clock at night to watch telly, right? And then he wants to start talking then, right? But then, right, he's going on a rant about group chats. He's not into this. We've all got hundreds of group chats. But then he'll start lecturing you on how you text. And now, I sent him a text last night at the end of it. A thumbs up. And then he sends me a voice note. Ah, you need to watch that. <laughs> you did? How? The, 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 the Would you want me to finger? No, listen, the thumb is equivalent to the shite. Do you no, know what I mean? No, no, that, no The shite no. eyes. Do, 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 do you know what your it's statement... It's like cool, bud. No, do you know what your statement about the thumb is the equivalent of? What? You're absolute paranoid heat. I'm giving you the thumb as a mate. Do you know what I mean? No, nah, um, you're going like that to me. <laughs> cool. No, I'm not. Uh, dafting me off. That's, no, I wish you would. Look at me, look it up. It's like, oh, you just you know don't what? do that. You no, don't send no. the thumbs up. Do you know what you've done, mate? Do you know what you've done? You <clears> sent <throat> me, your, your parting voice note was right, mate. My phone's running low on battery. I need to go I'll talk to you later. I give you the thumb back. So what's up with that? Nah, he, he's, 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 he's got negative connotations, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, at, least, at least he fucking replies to you when there's no. a thumb at the end of it. I'm not, I'm not, I can't. <laughs> Anyway, how he's getting on? He's all right, aye. Apart from that, he's all brand new. I've, I've been, I've been sitting, I've been in my hot tub. Oh, did you get a lazy spa? I got one. How did you Is manage to get one, mate? On? Have you not seen the photos of it? What, what do you do? What do you do with your days? Seriously, <laughs> he's got pictures of him in the hot tub with fucking water wings on and all that. Funny as fuck, mate. Come on, what's happening with your cradle? Honestly. Come on, mate. I just I can't be arsed, man. <laughs> just, like, just like watching wrestling eating chocolate. <laughs> no. No. I, I remember. I know what grado has been doing quite a lot during lockdown, man. Because I disturbed him one night and he was sitting with his missus. And I gave him a wee shout, man. I can't remember what it was about. But I sent him a voice note going, mate, I need to speak to you and all that. He's like, oh, fuck's sake, man. He's sitting eating, eating custard creams and watching repeats of High Road. <laughs> No, oh, I just did some STV yeah, we can watch High Road. I was fucking watching it. Was <laughs> and it was the funniest thing about it was he was genuinely annoyed. He's like, oh, fuck it, Stephanie, go, go, go pause that high road and fuck sake, why is it Bob? <laughs> mate, some of the episodes are good, mate. How far in are you, Grado? Second series, second season. <laughs> <laughs> is is Inver Barrack still in it? 
and iron with that. Mrs. Max Juice, come on, she's on it. David Snedden, he's got a shotgun. <laughs> Remember in fucking Isabel in the shop? Aye. Mm -hmm. Chick Cherry. What, 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 what's the owns on Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, by the way, we need to get in touch with somebody. There's a good, there's a, there's a good reason for us to remake High Road. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, does it for a living? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right, let's, let's not That's have Bob's to We don't need the competition out there the now. Right, we've got... The other equivalent of the other city. Okay. You're on BBC, but STV needs a... Come on. Aye. No, they don't. Like the, like the, they don't. The Monday Night Wars. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Imagine I've done a transfer, man. You're fucking... Oh, great, mate. I mean, <laughs> headline day, man. We both... Both for Hyrule. Hey. <laughs> hey, TV. Honest, me and Grado were at, were at a dinner dance, or like a charity dinner dance, right? And we got talking about that. Remember, we were saying it would be amazing if one soap could sign... A character, not the actor, sign Aye. a character, right? Aye. Like, Harold Bishop turns up in the Queen Vic one Sunday. Queen's um, tuba. Oh. <laughs> Did he put a tuba? That'd be amazing, man. What a, what a fucking boys, Grant. That's, That's next week's big question sorted out then, boy. Thanks for that. <laughs> Found some man, the dog for neighbours, ends up being Bob's pet, man. <laughs> Rack off. Well up, well up. Well up. <laughs> Right, my new dog, well, I'll push by off, Big Robbie. Big Michael. <laughs> Phil's in my garage, man, Phil Mitchell. Storming my overalls on, <laughs> with Angus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Right, Toots. Right. Storming Back your overalls on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm 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 imagine how neither would be on him. I'm in Angus just on there and I came into my luck one day. Are you didn't you? <laughs> Phil Mitchell's eyes popping out your scene. That would be funny as fuck, but you walk in, you go, ah, fuck's sake, there's Phil Mitchell off the telly. Right. That was it. Uh, see you next week, Trub. See you after. There's <laughs> <laughs> a. Yeah, the way you hang the league reconstruction, man. Oh, it's nonsense. It's a nonsense. It's a nonsense. What is it anyway? I'm, I'm not really... I'm not really 14, aware, 14 man. and 10? Is it not? Oh, I can't even 14, know, 14, 18 option, right? Which would see Partick Hearts retain their current place as well as Brora Rangers and Kelty Hearts into the league. What do you think of that? See that one more time? What's the, what's the proposals? It's a 14 14 year option, right? Rangers have ta I've got a table that. I would see Partick Thistle Hearts retain their current placing as well as Brora Rangers and Kelty Hearts into the league. Was there not something about the Colts? But yeah, um, it also sees the introduction of Colts teams. So right. the, the, the proposal that Rangers have got on the table at the moment is the 14 14 18. Brora and Kelty making up the, the two of the places in... Uh, Rangers, Rangers and Celtic Colts would be in, wouldn't they? Yeah, and do you know what? It's, Rangers and Celtic are actually agreeing on it. What's going to... Where the boat's probably going to fall down on it is all the lower league teams who don't want to see Colts sides come into that. All the community Aye. teams, you know? Turkeys don't vote for Christmas. Aye. Well, in Spain, Matt, they've, they've, done it in Spain for, they've done it in Spain for years, haven't they? Aye. Mm -hmm. I've been all that in the, in the lower leagues, but... Um, what would happen? I mean, what if Celtic drew Celtic Colts in the cup? That could they, 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 they would have to be like I think you can't do that in in Spain either. I think there's oh. there's obviously and they can only obviously get to a certain point. So whether they get into the championship level, then they won't be able to go any further than that. So what if, essentially, if you get right, let's say for talking sake, you've got Celtic Rangers first and second in the Premier League, right? Then you've got Rangers and Celtic Colts first and second in the Championship. What happens with promotion then? Is it the team that comes third and fourth? Presumably. I, Presumably. I don't think that works. I've got to be honest with you. I don't think it works. And I don't think we'd need to worry about it because when you look at the Challenge Cup, the Colt teams always get fucking hammered off the Arrow and all that anyway. Oh, and Seth Rangers got to the... Was it Seth oh. Rangers? Oh, oh. Rangers the Rangers Colts went on a good run last year. No, they didn't need to Aye. Every year yeah. before that, though, Steve. Aye. I think the Rangers Colts got to the semis last year. Did they know? They did. They did. Aye. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I can't for I can't see it working for numerous reasons like that. There, like, what if they do end up climbing? What's what then is the point? Aye, where do you say stop? Aye, because say the day, right? So, 
what Toll said there, say Rangers are Celtic, right, first and second, get promoted, whatever, go up to the Championship, first and second. It then becomes the teams third and fourth that are going to end up getting promoted to the Premier League, am I right? Yes. It makes the league weaker. Yeah. Can I, can I, I mean, I think Jim McAnally made a, a point as well, though. You know, what is the point in a Rangers and a Celtic Colts team? Because see, all the players that, that, you know, when was the last, let's put it this way, when was the last time a youth player really broke into that Rangers side or Celtic side and went on to become a, a real first team regular? Celtic, uh, Kieran Tierney. Kieran Tierney probably. But I mean, you, but it's one out of squad, uh, you know. No, I, in general. I in general. In general. I disagree with that, mate. I think Celtic have had a good record over the last few years bringing through. Tell players. me then. Tell me then. What, the players that have brought through? Aye. Right, so, I suppose going back, like, when you're looking at that Celtic team now, a fair chunk of them came through the academy, like Callum McGregor, uh, James Forrest, um, fucking, like I said, Kieran Tierney. Um, I, mean, I mean, Chris, that, that's only a handful of players, right? You're talking about putting... That's not even a handful, that's three. Yeah. Aye. Aye. That, you're talking about putting a full team of these boys yeah, in, in, comp- yeah, yeah. in competitive football. Now, I think a better way of doing it, because ob- it was Jim McAnally said it. He came out and said... Is that your brother? Martin, <laughs> <laughs> Martin O'Neill had said to him, what's your job here, kind of thing. And he said, my job's to get these boys ready. When he was uh, in the, the system at Celtic, my, bo- my job is to get these boys ready to play league football because 99% of these boys aren't they making it into that first team at Celtic. So then what is the point in having these Colt teams down there? They'd be better, they'd be better for me each club in the Premiership having a, almost like a feeder team. You know what happened I mean? to the reserves? Well, that's it, great lie. That's it. I mean, the whole is it's the cost of the reserve league because no one's got a big enough squad now to do it. Is, you know I mean, remember, I remember when I was a wee boy, man, I used to know all the Rangers reserve teams, Jazz Jutland and all that, and fucking all these players in 95, 96. You know, there was an established reserve league, wasn't there? Mm-hmm. I remember Gattuso playing in an old fun game at, I- at Ibrox again. There was the Rangers reserves and Celtic reserves. I remember getting to bring that back. Good. What's the money involved needing it? I saw. I think that's the problem, man. They can't mm-hmm. afford. They've not got a budget to have like a reserve league now, haven't they? No, it's no. not really. They can't do it. I just, I, I, I don't really see the point in the Colts teams, to be honest. But it's just the way it is, man. It's not going to. Rangers, are, Rangers and Celtic, are they going to? They're always going to sign players. They're always going to buy players. They're not going to rely heavily on their youth players coming through unless they are special. Do you know what I mean? But how many of them are going to be special? Well, that, that is true. Um, uh, Mikey Johnson was the most recent one I'd say that's came through. He's not a hundred percent regular, but he will be because he's a good player. But like you said, I'd like to see these players get out. Maybe like you said, John, a, a kind of feeder system. You know I what I mean? We are on these players out to say like a fucking Cowden Beath or something like that. And they all play together in the league for Cowden Beath. And then when, they, when they're ready to come through, they come through. But then it takes me on to my next point, right? So Rangers have now signed that Calvin Bassey for the rest of his 20. What is it? A development fee or something? We've had to pay like 230000 or something. Just, am I right in that? Something like that, isn't it? Aye. Uh, I think it's... Uh, we, when we signed them barely, I think it was 600000 And it's the same like... I think we signed somebody, I can't remember who else it was, we done that development fee, but again, we're bringing him in, you're, you're thinking he's back up for Barisic, but again, it's a young 20-year-old, so then, how have Rangers not got a 20-year-old back up, left back? Sitting in the in Murray Park, you know, I mean? you know what I mean, it's always going to be that way, innit, we're always going to look elsewhere, do you know what I mean, but, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Well, if, it, if the option's there, bring in a better quality one, then it's a no-brainer for me, I understand mm-hmm. what you're saying, but, um, it's, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's good points to this proposal, and I think there's bad points to the proposal. Right. We could debate this. For, we could debate about this from here to Minyana. Yeah, the mora. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> yeah, what, about, what, about, what about Aaron Hickey? But everybody's at him. What he's want a piece. Everybody want a piece of him, isn't he? Bayern Munich, Celtic, <laughs> Chelsea, Lazio. Hmm. When he likes you straight after Hadji, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Aaron Hickey's a brilliant player. He really is. You could see it. Like, it see, the first time he played against Celtic, he was blown out his arse, right? And he bust his fucking arse for the whole game. He was up and down that line, and it was 
you could see he was physically exhausted at the end of it, but he never gave up. And see that dig, man? He's, I think he's going to turn out to be a really fucking good player, to be honest with you. And it doesn't surprise me that he's getting linked with these sorts of teams. Mm. What's Jake's Mistake. Thought? What'd you pay for him, man? Well, if Livingston are looking for two million for Land, Landon Dykes, ten million, I'd maybe three, three, four million. Dykes as much as that. I just now think about it. You're paying for potential, mm. right? This boy, four million's nothing. He a Chelsea or a Bayern Munich. Is he? But he's, where does his contract end at house? I don't know, mate. I've no sense. just signed a new deal. I oh, has he? Right, well, there you go. That's just fucking. There you go. Fucking... <laughs> like I said, you're paying for potential. It's the same way um, like when Celtic or Rangers sell one of your, their young players on. Like, remember Jamie Ness when he went? He was full of potential. Never really fulfilled it, but if Rangers could have got a transfer fee for him, you'd probably have been talking about three or four million for him at the time, I would say. So right. I don't I don't see any any reason why Hearts can't get that, that amount of money for Hickey. Mm hmm. Probably, uh, maybe, maybe. What about Lyndon Dykes? Would you sign him, Grado? Nah, nah, not for me, not for me. No? I, I hate him playing against us, but... Uh, he's, I, 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 I mean, he, 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 he terrorises all the old firm when he plays with players, but he, you've seen that so many times with SPL players that end up coming to Rangers. I was going to say Andrews Felicia, but Felicia done no too bad. Uh, the, the, the one that was... Uh, <laughs> <like> the start... <laughs> uh, like... Last season it was at Piazzo. I mean, if I had a choice at uh, D- Dykes and uh, at Piazzo, I would have went for at Piazzo. But who do you think about Bob? I would. I think he's a good back. I think he'd be a good signing. Plus, yeah. I think he gives you a different dynamic up front, man. Every That's time he played much. against us, and every time he's played against Celtic, he's been an absolute horn for gave you. Know we just need a striker. We need strikers. You know what it would be good for away in Europe. Well, I mean, no, hey, hey, mate. We can deal where we are in Europe, man. We just need to <laughs> win games away at Tyne Castle and all that. You know what I mean? That's it. Away in Europe's no baller for us, mate. You know what I mean? I would sign him. I would. I think he's a. I really think he's got what we're talking about. I'm mean, potential. I think for a big guy, he's got a decent touch. He's a horn face, he's a physical presence. It gives you a different dynamic. And if the price is right, I would go for him, man. Does, does he fit Gerard's system, though, Stephen? Because but, Gerard doesn't play to that kind of strength. I know. That's Actually, what, I mean, what happens to Morelos. I think, aye, that's another thing, Morelos. But I think if we sign him, he's just an option to bring on. Because I don't know how many games the way we play, we pass, we pass, we pass, we can't break teams down. No. There's 20 minutes to go, we need a goal. See if we're somebody like him on, man. Just you, know who, you know who would be a brilliant foil for Jermaine Defoe? Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. the them up front together, him bullying the defence, Defoe getting in behind. I agree with you. Aye, but we are never going to go with two up front. Never, man. So that's never going to happen, man. Never. Unless he does change. I don't know if he might change it this season. I don't know. What about Fraser Foster, too? I think, it, I think that, that's out. I think the, the flyer's out for that one, man. Aye. Aye. It's, uh, it's going to cost too much. I would, personally, I would make him our main signing. Because the games that that guy won us on his own last season was fucking... Uh, they say, even in Europe, see the save in the last minute against Lazio at home. Mm-hmm. When the boy volleyed at about 40,000 mile an hour and the big man pulls it right out the top corner and they bother, they, he's, he's definitely worth it. But then you're looking at the age as well. But the good thing about it is he's a goalie and he can play for another fucking 10 years. Do you know what I mean? That's so true. It's, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I hope they, I hope they can uh, loosen the purse strings unless they've got another, another card up their sleeve. If I had my choice, I'd rather just put Bain in goals and get rid of Foster. But, <laughs> <laughs> but on. On the show today with former Hearts, Rangers and current Hamilton midfielder David Templeton and it's Grado's turn on the Legends Lottery and we will find out what I scored for Stevie Smith last week. Oh, did you get Stevie Smith? I got Stevie Smith. <laughs> he, was decent. he was very good. <laughs> and talking strangest bets on the big question but first, let's speak to a man who has moles everywhere in Scottish football. It's Chris Toll's Rumour Mill. Here comes the Well, this week, uh, the talk is, believe it or not, Mullerwell and Hamilton are going to amalgamate and make Lanarkshire FC. Lanarkshire FC. It's going to bring bring down... We'll talk to David Templeton about this as well, right? But it's going to to bring down the costs for the both clubs. And it's a day that I never thought I'd see. But 
Scotland Mark community. Mark, Mark, <laughs> in, Mark in your calendar, lads. This is the day when it was revealed that Lanarkshire FC is on its way. It was born. What colours are they going to play in? Half maroon, half red and white. Unbelievable. <laughs> half um, maroon and... What the fuck colour is it again? <laughs> maroon. Claret and amber. Sorry, claret and amber. Half, claret and amber. <laughs> half claret and amber, half red and white. Have you, seen, have you seen the new Motherwell away kit, by the way? It's a fucking topper. Really? Uh, you don't mean the new, the Lanarkshire away kit? No, this is the last season. It's Motherwell and Hamlin. Right. And then there's going to be another rejig of the Leeds next, the Leeds next season. So have you heard any potential management that's going to be taking over Lanarkshire FC's? Harry Boris Ed, Ross. Oh, it was, it, believe it or not, uh, Mark Lanil has been mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys laugh at me? I'm I'm always not right. telling these my stories if you keep laughing at me. Ah. <laughs> well, Mark we, Neil, we, Mark Neil and me, John Robertson is his right hand man. <laughs> John Robertson. Hi, Robertson. Hi, <laughs> no, John Mark Neil's John Robertson. Oh, All right. Well, right. I, thought I had images of you got man. next Jambo starting the next day, Mark Neil. I need to change it here, Mark. <laughs> Well, listen, I'm telling you, Lanarkshire FC, big rivals to Albion Rovers next season. Oh, <laughs> mate, well, the chunky one. The big cagoule on, man. I'm a pair of joggies, horns in the pockets, and that, Martin. Martin, I'm going to go through up front here, mate. Hey. Martin, Martin, pick me on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and remember you can get in touch with the show by getting us on Twitter at Football Daft Pod, Football Daft Podcast on Instagram, and just search for Football Daft on Facebook. Right, well, it's time to thank our sponsors, G4 Claims. So let, let's thank them in person as we welcome the company director, the one and only Jim Muir. Jim, how are you all right, Jim. Welcome, hey, welcome, Jim. Welcome, Jim. Back to enough. I'd just like to see a wee bit about G4 claims, uh, specialised in people involved in non-fault accidents. So if you have an accident that's not your fault, we can give you a light for light replacement vehicle. We can get your car repaired at one of our approved body shops. We can also fund the repair for you so you're not claiming your own insurance and you don't have to pay your policy excess. Also, if your car is a total loss or a write-off, we can still provide you with a light fly vehicle until you get the cheque from the regulated third party insurance company. So, if you have an accident, call G4 Claims 01698 767 172. And we do, you don't let you do good bit. What's with that again? The logo! <laughs> <laughs> not claims. Not a fault claims. Oh, no, not a fault easy. claims. Claims made easy. <laughs> That's that, isn't it? No, just, just, just before, before you bail, you've got a joke for us. What do you call a rich condom? What do you, oh, I don't know. What do you call a rich condom? Johnny Cash. <laughs> <laughs> Football dafts. Big question. Right, so this week's big question was inspired by Andy Lang on our Twitter. He stuck a bet on Scotland winning the World Cup with Billy Gilmer. And he only had 250 to one on it. <laughs> I don't so know what the strangest bet that you've made. Uh, what about you, Stevie? Put on any mental bet? Eh, <clears throat> what have I done? What have I done? I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm still finding it bizarre that you're only getting 250 to one for Scotland to win the World Cup with Billy Gilmore. Like, what? That's going to be like unbelievable. Strange bets. I don't. Uh, no, I'm quite boring, man. I've got a wee accumulator every weekend and then. A wee, maybe double in both teams to score or that jazz, but the strange bets are probably better with Grado, man. I like, to, I like to back like ten of the ladies and all that. See, so just spice it up. No, you did partner with Grado and he's got a 45 team accumulator on, man. It's worth like 750 million quid, you know what I mean? That's a jail. That's, 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 that's the one you want to fucking. That's, that's excitement, mate. Well, that's the thing, yeah. See, uh, the, I don't know if I've told you this one. If I have, just tell me to shut up, right? But 2006 World Cup, I just started working in my in my job that I'm in just now. And uh, me and me and my mate went to the bookies at half time, and it was a it was a World Cup with all the games, and you pick the score for all the games. It was like seven games or something like that, um, and I put twenty pence on it. 
no one fifteen grand. Shut up. I right. Did you? Aye. aye. I believe you. Did you take your pals to Vegas for that? No, I bought my first pub. <laughs> Seriously, I bought I bought the least to my first pub. I'm not joking, that's what I've done. That is so much no, I know I do believe you. I believe it's you. Like, what are you going to say, like, your, your first fucking set of golf clubs or something? <laughs> aye, they wouldn't be 15 grand, they're, they're only me. <laughs> like, I put 20, pen, 20 pence on a cut and one. 15 grand, what'd you get, man? I bought my first pub. I see the thing is, it genuinely, I won 15 grand, and the only thing that I could think of was why did I not put a fucking pound on that? Aye, of course. I but that's what you always think, innit? That's that, no matter what. No matter what. Oh, you put a fiver, you wish you put a tenner on it. I, what was your reaction, reaction like when you, you saw that come up? Oh, yeah, what the hell? See when the second goal went in for Italy against Germany, man. I nearly fucking exploded. Was that Del Piero who scored that one? No, it was uh, Grossi, or Grass, Grasso. Oh, remember, Grosso, the left back. I remember he scored against Germany. It was fucking, honestly, man. How, how, how'd you buy a pub? But, uh, <laughs> do you know what? Man, mate, honestly, it was hanging. It was... Uh, I had just come back from for that Big Brother, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us that story later. This, this was some 2006, <laughs> mate. I'll tell you that story later, right? And I went to watch the Scottish Cup final uh, down at my local, and when I got there, the doors were locked. And I was like, what the fuck's happened? And the guy had fucked off and left it. And I was like, oh, no, man, I made it find a new pub. And I was just looking through the paper the next day, and there was a fucking classified for it in the paper. And I went like, Oh, somebody will get a pub and they'll open back up again. Then the World Cup comes and they get the <coughs> I get the curtain up. Fucking nobody took the pub, so I took the pub. Man. So wait, tell me about it. Tell me, like, did you did you serve food? What was it like? What kind of I, music? It's a bar, it's a bar restaurant, mate. Aye. And who do, who done your food? Like your mom or that kind of thing? No, I said I got a chef in. I got two two different <laughs> chefs. In. So I mean. Um, it's just dead funny. It's interesting. I know it, I'm pure laughing as if I don't believe you, but I do believe you. But I just think it's fucking hilarious. Oh, I say, honest to God, it's the thing. Oh, I do believe you. What was it? What was it? What was it called? Uh, I, it was originally called Enigma, right? <laughs> right. No, no. I never called it Enigma. Wait a minute, right? It was originally called Enigma, right? But I realised that Enigma was an anagram, a minge. So I changed the name of the pub, right? Mm. Uh, by the way, I know he's, I can I, I cannot possibly be coming up with a Safi cuff. That's no, I know that. Right? No, I believe you. So the pub, I was a big fan at C24, Jack Brown. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was a big fan of 24, and the pub was 24 St John Street in Court Bridge, so I called it Bar 24. Fucking hell, man. Who? Is this like, is this like... A different section, I told you, Mum. <laughs> yeah, honestly, man. Uh, <laughs> what did you do in the pub? You the bouncer? Uh, or what was the deal? No, I was not a bouncer. No, I mean, I just, I just worked on it the same way as anybody else. Oh, that's interesting, man. Uh, it, funnily enough, it was, it was a low bar. If that's what you're asking, Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're all getting it. Oh, what man? Right. Is it a low bar? That's nice that you done that, but. Uh, no, I had always drank in there, man. I, I oh. loved it. I, I loved it, and I went away for Big Brother when I came back. It was shut down. I was fucking gutted. Yeah. You need I mean, to tell us a Big Brother story there. Aye. Aye, tell us your Big Brother story, mate. We'll get to that, right? We'll get to that. Well, I mean, also, uh, lads, just a wee, a wee, a wee quick show, if you don't mind. My, my wee cousin's just had a wee lassie. Uh, Maisie Duncan. Um, she, we've been waiting on her coming, obviously, for about nine months. So it was a it was a good a good surprise the other day when she arrived. So oh, that's good, man. Me and Maisie Duncan, um, my wee cousin Sean and his Mrs Ashley. Oh, that's Superb. nice. Superb. My niece is pregnant and on. She's doing a couple of days. My niece Superb. is having come and played for Portugal. Well, mate, you fucking. I'm just... <laughs> You, mate, that, that fucking, I can't believe that whole story. That was fucking brilliant off of a bet. That blows my uh, tenor own Connor Salmon to score 1 0 at Parkhead, 65 to 1. We can't fucking top that. <laughs> I fucking remember that game. Aye, uh, remember it? 64th minute or something, like 62nd minute. Didn't they buy a pub with that one, but they didn't. That's what I want it. I struggled for a fucking round in my pub with <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's get to the listeners, right? Andy. Last November, stuck a fiver on every team to score in the National League on a weeknight. 23 of 24 had scored after 60 minutes. 
and cashed out for over £1,300. Shite offer, giving a Wrexham goal to return 4 and a half k Thankfully, they never scored. OK, Andy. Still won. 13 on a quid. Thomas Morgan got his bet at 400 to 1 for Rangers against Bayern. Kai Havertz to score first. Uh, sorry, I said uh, Rangers against Leverkusen. Uh, Kai Havertz to score first, full time 3 1 and score half field to be booked. Needless to say, 10 sars cheeks when Haji missed a one on one in the last oh. few minutes. But ended up with two, two grand in the sky. Oh, that's right. a good bet, man. That is a good bet. Aye. Callum Ewart. Uh, the World Cup 2018 put all four games in the quarterfinals to have a header scored and a goal from outside the box. That's a good one. Only one let me down and there was no goal from outside the box in Sweden versus England. Would have won a fortune but fortunately had doubles and trebles as well. So I got something back. That's a good story from Carl there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great one. You're raining about your nut, mate. Brilliant. I'm loving it. Stu says Falkirk to win the league under Paul Hartley. Definitely a strange bet. Fuck <laughs> Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie said he's this during the 2014 World Cup in Brazil Norway based uh, Betson offered 175 to 1 odds on Suarez biting someone during the tournament more than 100 people took them on and obviously won after his bite against Chiellini in Italy what? what? that's mental that's what? fucking mental 175 to 1 I, I, the other thing that Stevie added on to this as well was apparently there was this uh, bet made in Uganda, right? It was in the Uganda newspapers. It was like one of the villages in Uganda. This guy, Henry, and his pal, Rashid, were betting on the, the Man United Arsenal game. And Henry put up his house up against Rashid's wife and his Toyota. Oh, my. So they, this was all ratified, but like the village elders were all involved in this bet and what have you. So then Man United end up 1-0. So Henry lost his house. <laughs> That's a strange okay. bet for you. <laughs> That's a strange bet for you. I love that. That's brilliant, mate. How, how do you even end up with three wives and a big fancy house in Uganda? That guy must have been rolling on it. <laughs> Hashtag winning. Mm. <laughs> well, clearly no, he fucking well, lost. He lost an end up, aye. This is one for me, by the way. Addy, Leeds manager Marcello Bielsa to, the, to be the next James Bond after Daniel Craig. Only get 500 to 1. He actually sent us a screenshot with the proof. No, but so you know what? There's more chance I'm being the next James Bond villain. Ah. No, the next James Bond. Okay, so a, remember the whole fucking scouting thing, the illegal fucking scouting thing? I don't see the thing. I see me, that's just spying, mate. Aye, James Bond's a spy. Aye, but he's, like, he's more like a Bond villain. He's got the Bond I villain. Listen, don't fucking talk about my chill like that, all right? <laughs> I wonder what odds we would get if we went to the bookies and asked for Stephen Purden to be the next Bond. Oh, if it's Actually, if that's in that big jacket will come in to play mate, me and you. <laughs> aye, aye. Grado could be the Bond villain. <laughs> no, he can, he can be the guy that makes his, um, makes his um weapons. That every time we go in, he's just, he's just making a rolling sausage. <laughs> Did he speak that? I'm no, I just don't fucking watch James Bond. Right, shug, the du- shug the dog. I once put on... Mer- ah, very good yeah, shot. Forget that one. <laughs> Jamie Reid, Crystal's rumour mill to be believable. One, what's that? Is that <laughs> you can't read that 10,000 to one. 10,000 to one. I think that's... Jamie, I think you're selling me short. Hey, hey, get up. Right, uh, so Alan Lyons, great though to actually remember to get somebody for the Legends lottery. 5,000 to 1, I will take that bet. You're Alan. going wrong today, Graham, aren't you? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the Legends Lottery on Football Daft. We have made it our mission to find out where the cult heroes are now on our Legends Lottery. Each week, one of the team is tasked with finding a former club legend from Scottish football and getting them on the show. Then it's up to you, the listener, to rate how good out of five the guest was. Chris is on 6.1 with Hibs legend Mickey Weir and the one and only Jerry Pellini. And I am on 3.6 with Chris Miller. But that's all changed after last week as the scores are in for Stephen Smith. Now, producer John, let's hear it. Well, Stevie was a cracking interview last week. Uh, you know, good-looking fella as well. And the fans... Go, they were. He was handsome, mate. Was, was handsome he? Boy. Right, one of the ones. Boy. I get it. I get it. Like, was who it else Ross come on? Be, it was like Ross McCrory again, mate. Right, I get it. I get it. Yeah. When you just go at, he's all pristine and all that. Right. And beautiful looking. I get that, mate. 
Yeah, yeah. So the fans thought so as well. Well done, Stephen. Highest score yet. He got a four. Wow, mate. Well done. I you beat Polini. Stephen <laughs> beat Jerry Polini. There we go. So we can reveal the former Rangers Aberdeen and Kelly left back. Got a four. Who was brought on by me? So now, here we go. Grado, it's his turn this week. So, big man. Have you managed to get anyone on the Legends Lottery and challenge me and Toll? No, I've just opened a can of juice and <laughs> hanged it there. I've just had to calm myself down by opening a can of juice. Because producer John will have my back here. I know you're going to think I'm talking shite, but I had somebody. And we've just attempted to... Tell him, John. Yeah, he has a, he has a very good, he has a very good right, case lined up. I mean, it's not his fault. Because the timings, but he's fucking threw me down the river. Is that the phrase you say? He threw me down the river. Flung me under a bus. Flung me under a bus. A bus. He's flung me under a bus. He's flung me under a bus because we've just tried to phone him there and he's in his motor, so he can't talk. And I know we'd like to get away, but he's a former St. Mirren player. He's a former... He played. He was at the bus for a cup of coffee on Wikipedia, right? I don't remember him. My fair doesn't remember him either, right? So that was going to be good. I've got the bus tap on for him ever, and he's fucked us off. So it's not right. his end, but it's just... So, so, don't reveal Gradle because you know you can have him in the pocket for the next time. Right. So right. can I just can it just to clear up and just to get a wee conclusion here again, right? So you get nabdy. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I have got nabdy. I do have nabdy, but I technically I did have somebody, but he's just driving in his car and he can't do it. So you've got nabdy. Phone him. What? Can I phone him? We yeah, phoned him, he's in his motor, he's telling us he can't do it. He can't uh, drive can't drive and drive and talk on the phone, Chris, when he's picking his son so, up. So, again... You can, I, if you, you can if you've got G4 claims behind you. <laughs> 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 touché, brother, touché. So, I'm affronted. Um, I'm affronted. I, I've got nothing else to say. <laughs> Apologise to the fans. Apologise to the fans. It's probably... It's due to John's unprofessionalism for letting other segments go long. Oh, that's it, right, that's it. That's it Grado. What? So, the, the, the gloves are just about to come off. Now, yeah. let's just tell a story to Chris and Stephen. No, Jack. you don't need to say nothing. Uh, don't you open your mouth. Do don't you open your mouth, John. Do it, do it, do it. He's the one that started this. Let it be known what Grado just said on tape about me being unprofessional. Now, here's the real story, okay, boys? <laughs> right, go, shit. <laughs> what happened? Right, go. So, I messaged Gradle yesterday saying, have you got someone for the Legends Lottery yet? What do you think? Very little reply, but he said, no, I don't actually. I said, don't worry, mate, I'll get your back. And I sorted out his legend for him. Oh, yeah, you have a minute here. Hold oh. on. Hold on. That fucking grass. That's yeah, listen. That grass. You're the one that called me unprofit. You started. John, you, you're the one that said to me, let's just keep this between me and you. Until you do you started this by saying, Producer John will have my back here. Then you started getting on and on. You went, Do you know what? It's all down to Producer John's unprofessionalism. So you didn't, you didn't even bother to get a finger out your ass and get a Legends lottery. Poor John had to go and get it for you. Stevie, I think you're, you're, you're uh, focusing on the wrong thing here. What? What? They two are conspiring behind our back. <laughs> John, you're a rat. That's right, Chris. <laughs> yeah, me and Chris are fucking what they're arse off getting guests no on. Jerry, no Stevie Smith, you two scumbags. No Chris, comment. Mom was, Chris, mum will start a rain podcast. Fuck you hey, too. Soccer crazy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Football no, stupid. <laughs> He's right, teasing, so, he's teasing. What, what about this trip, Shane? What about the old merch? Oh, right. oh, oh, you seen it yet, Grant? Nah, mate, what's up? Look, look at football daft merch. They've, they've not put on masks, have they? They've done it wrestling daft. There's a front with that. No, mate. I've, I, I have. I have. Have we got masks? I, I've, I've got face masks. Is there a mask here, us? <laughs> oh, it's oh. just the football daft logo and a face mask. Cool, right, fair enough. Right, so now you can pick your very own uh, football daft merch. You can get a t-shirt, a polo shirt, a mug, a hoodie, a cap, a phone cover, and in tribute to Grado, a bum bag. 
not only that, you can also have your football daft boxers and your football daft medical mask to keep you safe for the L virus. So all these items are available at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash football daft. That's shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash football daft. And as we've just opened the shop, we're giving you a 15% off everything for the next couple of weeks. If you buy something, send us a picture so we can put you in our Hall of Fame. So go to football daft at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash football daft. Hey, let's welcome to the show a man who started at Stenhouse New York before becoming a success at Hearts and then moving on to Rangers. With them, he was part of the squad to win the third division in League One before he left for Hamilton, where he is now in his second spell. Please welcome, with a fine head of hair, David Templeton. Thanks very much. <laughs> Glad to be on. You all good, see you, mate? All good? Yeah, all good. Um, just same as everyone else, just a bit demented with lockdown, but uh, hopefully get back to normal life soon enough. Tell me about it, mate. Are you really, what are you doing? What does Hamilton do? Well, nothing, but I'm not going in the club. I've just got to basically do our own fitness stuff at home. So Have you not got a mad fucking tank thing? A mad, <laughs> like this mad thing that somebody's made, like a big device to spray you all down? Yes, I've seen it on Twitter, actually. I think it's meant to kill the, the bacteria um, for when you go out in the pitch, basically. I don't know what it's like. I'll, How did Hamilton end up with that? I don't guess mad, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. I uh, actually it's not got a clue. As I say, I just seen it on Twitter on the news and that was that. Is it like see the see the machine that Ross goes into and friends to get the the time? Is that what it's like? Do you need to go count Mississippi to get your back washed? Yes, what I seen, I think it's it says you've got to go in for like twenty seconds or something like that and like spin around. <laughs> get all the germs off. That's like getting a dancing in for twenty seconds, spin around and get fired right back fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see the I heard the virus was flirting one to Hamilton. I've seen a few things saying that as well. <laughs> so listen, Davey, it, your middle name is Cooper, right? You played for Rangers, but you're actually a Celtic supporter, aren't you? Yeah, I was growing up, yeah. Uh, was, don't, um, don't me, don't whiz me. You're a it, Celtic supporter, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> that was, it was my dad. My dad's a, he's a mad Rangers fan and that was his favourite player, so that's why he named me after him. But it's the same name as uh, Grado's Doug. Hey, my dog's called Cooper and all, mate. So is mine. <laughs> That's actually. <laughs> <laughs> my youngest one, I couldn't think of any name. My missus came it's up with that. Man. That's funny. What kind of dog you got? I've got two pugs. <laughs> aye, two pugs. Uh, two pugs, aye. What's the other pug called? Junior. Ah, oh, fucking hell. Junior. After Junior Mendes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was the missus as well. I just left the names to her. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife's a happy life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me about it, mate. So who were your heroes growing up, David? Weirdly, growing up, my, my big brother was a Rangers fan and he had Loudrop DVDs. Aye. And I used to watch his DVDs all the time, which is weird, obviously, being a Celtic fan, but because of the position I played and stuff, I, I loved the way he played, so I always watched his, his DVDs constantly. Well, my, my big brother used to wake me up. What? Have you got any Scott Sinclair DVDs, David? Nah, I don't. I don't have any of them. Ah. Don't, I don't think he's as good as Louder up to be fair. What? <laughs> you seen the stats? <laughs> <laughs> but here, do you know what that? Here, do you know what that reminds me that you saying that you liked uh, Brian Louder growing up, but you were a, a a Celtic fan, right? I know it's coming here. I know it's coming here. <laughs> have I spoken about this before? You've told me about it, you've yeah. not spoken to me on here. Who you hey, told? You better answer, right? Oh, it's just... He'll be choking, he's been choked to us. Right, Joe, I'm on a podcast, right? Who was my favourite football player growing up? Dave I hold on. You're an absolute fucking weirdo. I'm so mad. Hey, Joe, see you later on, mate. <laughs> Bye bye. <laughs> Lottery in you as well. You're going after your rant now. Pure yeah, man, I don't you. He's afraid of you. I can understand you liking loud, David, like as in the way you play the game, right? And the way you were, you were attacking, what kind of winger. But my good pal Grado here, who I've been pals with for a very long time, this is very unsettling news for me, mate. I never knew this, and I've no idea why Grado 
to Stevenson, the tap end of Stevenson, big it's Rangers fan's favourite player was fucking Pierre Van Hoydon. <laughs> <laughs> you told the goal with us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, move on, because I'm not getting a front either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so David, you started off at Stenhouse Muir at a really young age. Who were the pros around you that helped you at that time in your career? Uh, when I was there, it was a guy, Colin Cram, John Paul McBride, who used to beat Celtic as a kid. Aye. That's and right. then Paul McGrillen, who's sadly no longer here, but that was, well. the, that was the three that helped me the most when I was coming through. Um, they were good with advice and I think just even in training and stuff, they always wanted me just to express myself. Not to, if I lost the ball and stuff, just to keep trying stuff. And when I was at Steny, I could just try tricks and try yeah. nothing eggs, everything. I was just, just like a kid playing amongst like my pals, basically, because I was able to just enjoy it. So they gave you like a free a free role basically, just on you go, play your game, enjoy yeah. yourself. That's yeah. the way it, man. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it's like that anymore. Like I think now it's kids are coached for a very young age, so they don't get to it's all about pass, pass, pass. You don't really see many getting to express themselves, like trying tricks and stuff. So yeah, for me when I was when I was there, they they were brilliant with me, they three. No, oh, you're right there, because I watched a thing on uh, Sky Sports the other night and it's the uh, keep the ball passable. Yeah, I watched that as well. It's actually yeah. very good enough. It's mental, isn't it? It's like, yeah. oh, especially when Pep took it at Barca and it's so methodical and it's even on Reece saying he wasn't allowed to take the ball and run with it. He was just, his one one of the games he was playing, his instructions were just to make a run. You're running behind you. Yes. For the fullback. And he's like, well, you can give me the ball and I can do it. And Pep's like, no. You need to stick to this. Do you know what I mean? So that's the way. Yeah. I think that's the way a lot of things are doing it. That is incredible. Like even last season, we played against Man City, and I was playing against Danilo, and I've yeah. never, I've never seen anything like this in any like my full career. When the left back had it, Danilo was going into centre midfield. So for me, I didn't know if I was to go in with him, or to still try and kind of stay wide to help my full back who was against Mares. So. If I didn't go with Daniel, he was picking up in centre mid and being like a playmaker. And then when I was getting in with him, they were just giving it the centre half and straight to Mares, who was 1v1. But I was just like, that's the way Guardiola is. He does stuff that I've, I've never seen before. It, it worked every time. It was incredible. That is bonkers, man. That is. It was frightening. Because I'd, never, <laughs> because I'd never seen it before, I was like, do I go in with him? Do I stay? Like, I had no idea what to do. What did your manager say that game at half time? Well, I say, I say to him at half time, he says, just go with him. So then Mares was getting left 1v1, and obviously that's what they were wanting, basically. And then he was, you know, left back at half time. That's mind blowing, man. That's, that's, that's frightening. That's, that's when you were playing the button, eh? Right? Aye. <clears throat> it's unbelievable. It's, it's, as I say, it's something you never see, and it's something that you'd never really think of. He just thinks out of the box constantly. Aye. There must have been some boys, but like signing for button. And then go, all right, I'm going to be in like, the, lower, the lower league in England and then getting drawn with City. That might, you must, your ass must have been making buttons to get to that game. Well, that's the thing. We had, we'd played a couple of big teams and they, they were built up to it. We beat Middlesbrough, beat Aston Villa, beat Burnley, um, beat Nottingham Forest. And then I think it was just us, City, Chelsea and Spurs that was left in the semis. So either way, you know you were getting a massive club anyway. And Worst case scenario, we go to City, who first leg just absolutely like it's relentless. They just they don't even take it easy on you. Guardiola, I remember they were four 0 up first half, and Otamendi had it like sort of left back position on the on the line, and the dugouts were right there, and um, he tried to play a ball up over the top, and lost it. And Guardiola came out like Dino Mabuse, telling him to keep the ball, go to the other side, and that was a four 0 and I was just like, wow, like, <laughs> just wants to kill teams, basically. But it comes across when you see these, do- even the Man City documentary on, oh, on Amazon. Amazon. Yep. The standards are just through the roof in it. It's like, if you don't, if it, it's why he wants, if you don't do what he's saying, you're not going to be in the team long. If you don't play at all, yeah. Ah. I know, he's incredible. As I say, it just takes everything to the next level. Mm. It's frightening. Talk about managers. When you were at Hearts, David, what managers took to you at Hearts? Because there was a few managers in your time there, weren't there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my favourite was Jim Jeffries. Oh. Um, just because he, he was good with me. Like, I 
that's when I started really playing. I made my debut under Shabba Laszlo, but when Jeffries came in, that's when I was kind of playing all the time. And he was the same as what I was saying with the guys at Steny. He used to just say it in games, just to keep taking people on. He says, I don't care if you lose it. He says, nine times out of ten you'll lose it. He says, but see that one time? He says, that's the time that you could make something happen and win the game for us. Right. So I just, my confidence was just sky high because I was able to just do what I wanted to do. Right. You, you worked under, obviously, Shabba Laszlo, but you also worked under Stephen Frail uh, and Paul Sergio as well, and also yeah. Cora Hotchka. Um, what you've got, you've got to have some belting stories of it at that time at Hearts, man. Aye, now come on, tell the geese something. Come on, what was the craziest <laughs> thing that happened at Hearts then? Well, when, when I obviously when I went, I was a kid, so I was in the youths, and that's when it was mainly all the the Lithuanians and foreign coaches. So I never really got to train with many of them. I think I started training when it was actually Stevie Freel. Aye, I started training with the first team, and then obviously Shaba came in. But he, he was a strange character, Shabba. Aye. Um, what did he do? Just, he used to, he used to like slaughter the young boys. I remember we played the reserves and we were playing Celtic at Fourth Bank, still in Albion Stadium. And if Celtic win that day, they would have won the reserve league. So they had Paddy McCourt and stuff was playing and he was tearing us apart. And it ended up, it was 2-1, 88th minute. I scored to go to each. And then I think it was we, Scott Robinson, scored the winner, 3-2. Obviously stopped them winning the league. We came back in, training on the Monday, and Shaba was like, oh, it's, it's not good enough. Um, you just can't lose to them and stuff. And like, what the fuck? What's he talking about? He left, he left, he left 86 minutes. He thought we'd get beat 2-1. He didn't even know it for the <laughs> team. He didn't even have a clue. And we're, yeah. we're, just, we're looking at him like, what the fuck? That's the first team manager, and he's slaughtering us for getting beat when we'd win. <laughs> Fuck's sake, have you got any, any Romanov stories? Oh, Rom- he was, uh, he used to actually, so his interpreter he used to get training kit and come out and hit shots into his interpreter. <laughs> and if, there, if there was no goals, he would just kick the ball his interpreter would have to go and get the ball and bring it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when you're playing at school, when you're the goalie, there's a goalie and, and it goes by the fucking, you have to go and chase the ball. Yeah, I swear, it was like a wee puppy dog having to get the ball for him. But I used to, like, we'd be training and then, a couple of the boys about me, by the way, he's got your boots on. He used to just go in the boots and <laughs> my boots on as well because he's the same size as us. <laughs> I was the only one that was a size seven. He used to take my boots. <laughs> but I swear, I'm even joking. <laughs> take your boots and go and hit and shots and he's in the upper there. Honest to God. Go and hit and shots and he's thin air. He was mental to be fair. Absolutely mental. Oh, Did he ever, there was a lot of rumours about him trying to pick your team. Was there, was there anything like that at the time? Well, I've heard a lot about that. Um, I know that Josie and Calvez, um, they were trying to get him in a new deal. But I think he was on a like great good money and he didn't want to stay. And if he didn't sign, then he wasn't going to play. And then, as I say, he wasn't wanting to stay. So I think he was going in and asking for like 25 grand a week just because they knew they couldn't offer it. So it was like he was still <laughs> negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so he didn't play while that was going on. Um, I think it's happened with a few. I'm not sure if it happened with Mikey Stewart as well. I um, love that, but he took your, take your boots and start. Is <laughs> Honestly, I, I had a meeting with him about getting a new contract. It was the only time, and it was me having his interpreter, and he started asking me who my favourite player was. And I says, oh, I like Ronaldo. And he was like, <laughs> oh, he says, mine's is Ribery. He says, see if Ronaldo had a football team, would you want to play for his team? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, like, he's trying to stitch me up here. He's trying to get me a new deal, but he's seen if I would leave. I just like, Did you play for Ronaldo? <laughs> uh, for a good 10 minutes, we were talking about Ronaldo and Ribery's football teams. I was just like, this is fucking bizarre. That's what my producer coming to me saying I've got a movie with De Niro. Do you want to go in it? Do you want to leave the whole city to go in a movie with De Niro? Would you do it? Would you do it, Paul? Would you do it? De Niro wants to do it. Would you stitch me up? <laughs> Not just that, but it's the fact that he's in me. He's. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude, I can't even get my head around it. I can't even. That guy was bonkers, wasn't he? But he was oh, so much. He was good quality entertainment, but man. Uh, he was absolutely mental. It pure puts my mind on like David Brent or something. Aye, like if he, if he owned a football club, do you know what I mean? Imagine <laughs> trying to have a conversation with somebody uh, through a, an interpreter about football. <laughs> even having to try and have a conversation with somebody through an interpreter must have been bad enough. Did he actually ask that? 
Well, that's <laughs> the thing. It's like he would talk for about five minutes in Russian, then his interpreter would ask a question in about ten settings, and I'm like, that's not what he's just said. Like, <laughs> it so long. I always um, see at the end of a UFC when they've got an interpreter for the fighter. They go, mm-hmm. like, so, so what do you think of the fight? And they go on for a good two minutes, and the interpreter just goes, ah, yeah, it was pretty good. I swear, <laughs> that, that's what, that was happening. <laughs> Mental. <clears throat> So there was a big, I mean, when you played with Hearts, there was a big fuss made over you and stuff like that. Was there any, what other teams came in for you apart from Rangers? Um, the January before Rangers, Bristol City tried to sign me. Right. Um, I think it might have been actually Derry McInnes that was there. Because um, it was the last day of the window as well. And I got told to take stuff through to Edinburgh with me because basically the owner had took a plane up to Edinburgh. Um, and basically they were just trying to agree the terms. But I think I think it was maybe five hundred thousand and Hearts had knocked it back. They wanted more, so ended up that was me, I stayed there. And then what made you do, do go to Rangers? Well, just before that, you, right. you had your last game at Hearts, you played against Liverpool and you scored the Anfield. Oh fuck. What was that like that night, man? Oh, that was incredible. I think because obviously the year before we'd played Tottenham. And get battered five 0 off them. Aye. So we were looking at the Anfield, thinking, "Fuck, it's going to be one of them again." Because we'd lost the first leg one 0 and they had like changed all our team. So we met the Anfield. We seen Gerard, Carragher, Sterling, Suarez. They had like a right strong team up. You were thinking, "Oh no!" But I can't. Either, I think Jamie McDonald played well. To be fair, made some good saves and stuff. But they were never really like battered us in terms of. Aye. Like no, no, no. during the game, so obviously the longer it goes on, you think maybe get half a chance, take it to extra time, and obviously I had that shot, which was Snyder a shot to be honest. <laughs> at him. Um, obviously Reina fumbled it. Um, so then when you go and see the crowd, they're falling down the stairs and everything going crazy. Aye. So that's unbelievable. And then Suarez goes two minutes later or something. I said very first and only time. <laughs> I ever cheered a heart school. Like, I was watching <laughs> right. it in the house and see when I went in, I cheered. I was like, gosh, go on. And I remember saying it in Twitter and everybody just coming back saying, I me and all, me and all, me and all. It was it. Like, the whole of Scotland was behind hearts that night, man. Mm-hmm. The whole of Scotland, it was brilliant. Well, I think it was because obviously you don't expect anything and then we end up nearly taking, I think, is that the year Liverpool finished second as well? Aye. I think so. They were a very good team and we nearly took it to extra time. It must have been unbelievable. Aye. Just even doing that. It was, it was tremendous. But like, like you say, he's going for getting turned over half his spurs a year before to doing that against Liverpool, who I think they had, had they not been in like the Europa League final the year before or something like that as well, or they, something along the lines. But what an achievement it was. Even even though he's lost the tie, it was it, it was one each, wasn't it, Anfield? One each, aye. That's what Suarez went and scored. It's as if when we scored, it was like, right, now we need to go and score. Like, sure enough, he just went and thinking up Megs Aliukas and then beat Jammer in their post. Just, just when they fancied that they could just turn it on and that was the difference with, obviously, look up him now, he's at Barca. Oh, he's not <laughs> no too bad for himself now, is he, that, mate? He's frightening. But that's the way it was. It's as if, like, oh, we we'll need to go and score now. They just turned... Went for year one right up, know what I mean? Rangers coming in for you, right? Rangers are sitting in the third division. How was it an easy move for you, mate? Was it a tough decision? Obviously, being a Celtic fan as well, how hard was it for you to make that move to Rangers? No, in, te- in terms of being like a fan, that didn't bother me because I've never been like a, a die-hard Celtic fan. I never went to any games, nothing like that. So see, that's what I think. A lot, I see a lot of young football players. They they grow up supporting a team, but. They've not got the time to go to these games because they're that dedicated to their football. So they've never, they've not really got a, a team that they religiously support. Some of them, I, I believe. I, when you're playing football, you genuinely don't care. Like, I heart snapper against Celtic. I hated them. I wanted to beat them. Like, Aye. you support who you play for. So it doesn't matter. Like, no, I would, if I'm watching a Celtic Rangers game, I'd want Rangers to win. Where you go, you chance. It's honestly like, you support the teams that you've played for, like I'll still look at Hart results, Rangers results, I'll look at Burton results. I don't care about anybody else's. That is interesting to know that, isn't it? That's, that's it good. Is. It is. But <clears> I, I, you might get, I don't know, there's probably the odd 
die hard, they'll say, oh, I won't, I wouldn't sign there, I wouldn't sign this or that, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But most football players will, will go to a team that they don't like. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's going to be beneficial for you and your family and stuff like that, mate. Exactly. And it's a business, mate. That's what I'm just a career at the end of the day. It's mm-hmm. like working any other job. Was it an easy decision, though, even with Rangers in the third division? That was harder. I, the thing that was easy about it was I was getting forced out of your hearts right. because they were struggling financially and they needed the money badly. And else I think they were going to go bust, to be honest. Um, so I get told, my, the phone my agent says when I was going through, says that if I don't sign, I'll never play for hearts again. I'll go back and I'll train with the kids, like all that type of stuff. So I just thought to myself, like, well, it's better playing the third division than no playing at all. So, mm-hmm. and obviously financially it was good as well. Like, so I was like, it's, it's a nice choice to make really. I, I what you're saying there, that's like, uh, if you like, see if you'd done that in any other profession, that would be considered as like constructive dismissal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't understand why football teams get away with doing that to people. Well, that's that's thing that annoyed me as well. After I signed, Hearts came out the next day with a statement saying that um, I had a bad attitude. I wanted to leave. Um, they'd offered me umpteen new contract offers and they rejected every one. And they had they'd offered me one new contract. I think it was two hundred pound more than I was on. Um, and I was one of the lowest paid at the time as well. So they they came out and made it as if I was a bad egg, basically. Aye. aye. Um, you left it all at your door, mate. Yeah, which that annoyed me because I, like, I loved Hearts. I had nothing bad to say about them whatsoever. I got on well with everybody, so for that to happen, that was quite annoying. But I don't know if that's purely been from Romanov past doing having to say that. Like, so. It's just who, was who was the manager at the time when you left? Was it Paulo Sosa? No, it was um, John McGlynn. John McGlynn. I who I really liked as well. I got on well with. It was actually quite funny. He phoned me the next day um, and I didn't have his number. And he was like, all right, David, it's John McGlynn. I just wanted to congratulate you on your move, blah, blah, blah. But I thought it was Lee Wallace trying to wind me up because <laughs> Waldo's quite big for like pranks and stuff. And I'm on the phone and I'm like, oh, shut up, Waldo. Like, I'm not stupid. I know it's you and that and hung up on him and that. John McGlynn texts me saying, David, I swear it's, it's the manager. Like, um, <laughs> Text Gary Locke and ask what the number is. And sure enough, I text Locke and I was like, Locke, what's the gaffer's number? He sent me it. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I had to phone back and apologise to him. <laughs> my, my first thought there would have been, Gary Locke's in on this. Uh, <laughs> 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 as soon as he said that, I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> I had to so, if you get, if you get uh, you're back at Hamilton now, uh, you just signed a new deal. I no talk about Rangers, no. I know. Sorry, I Rangers. We just told we just gonna miss that whole party screen out, aye. I forgot about that, but <laughs> so David, David, how hard was it in the, the lower leagues? I'll ask the question about Rangers talk and talk to you about Hamilton later, mate, right? <laughs> how hard was it? How was the lower leagues? Was it difficult in terms of like motivation and the standard and stuff? Nah, it's not hard in terms of motivation, like I think games are harder than people think. People think, oh, it's part-time players, you're just going do this and do that. But they're playing against Rangers. For them, it's like a, a cup final. final. They're, they're so up for it. I remember we played still in Albion and I get smashed four times in the first 10 minutes. Four boys get booked for different tackles. It's just mm-hmm. like they're right in your face, just they're buzzing. See, for, see if I want a better phrase, it's kind of like a professional team playing against a pub team. Do you know what I mean? The, the pub team want to fucking put their mark on them straight away at the beginning. And that kind of dulls, it makes you think twice about running by that guy again, doesn't it? You do. And the thing is, like, I was used to it because I had played lower leagues, so I knew what to expect, like the away games and stuff. But you had, like, we had the boy at Milton Cribari, who used to play for Lazio, Aye. who's then gone to Elgin away. He's got a big fright. Like, uh, he doesn't, he's not got a clue. He's never seen anything like that. He's used to mm-hmm. going to the San Siro and stuff. Right. Know what I mean? It's, was it hard for some some like foreign players to adapt to that? Would did they yeah. would they vocal about it? Yeah, a few of them struggled like big time. Like when they would say that, they were just when they used to like that. It was all right. I broke a bigger pitch, like a bit more time in the box. His team would sit in a wee bit more. But when you went to the away games, they weren't used to it at all. 
See, in, hi- in hindsight, what do you think about the, the way Rangers done business in these seasons that were in the lower leagues? Obviously, they're, they're scooping up players like you, but there was that, you know, the, the amount of foreign players that they signed. Do you think they should have went for them down the route of signing the best Scottish players in the lower divisions or in the, like the SPFL? It's easy to say that now. Like, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, if they just got players for the first division and they would have got you up through the first two leagues or played some of your youths and, and got them better. But at the same time, fans are Rangers fans are massively demanding, and you will know that. Mm-hmm. So they were still wanting the club to sign players, mm-hmm. as well as bring the odd young players through. So we still had obviously like Lee Wallace, Lee McCullough. They had the experience there, but they were still wanting like a few signings. If you know what I mean. What was McCoy like as a manager? How did you find McCoy? Actually, I got him brilliant with McCoy. Right. Um, Excellent. Obviously, Love him. my first season was brilliant because um, I was playing all the time. I got injured my second game, but after that, I played as well. And then it was just the, ne- the next two seasons, they brought in a couple of players and I didn't play as often as I wanted, which happens. Some managers prefer other players, which is fair enough. Mm. But as a guy, he's honestly he's hilarious. What was, your, what was your highlight at Rangers? What would you think when you went, right, this is what I did, this is being, this is brilliant? What I know, what I'm feeling. Well, obviously when I signed, that was... You scored two goals in your debut, didn't you? I was going to say that my first game, I think it was it's more so because when I was at Hearts and we played Rangers, I remember walking out to Simply the Best and Lee Wallace was next to his playing for Rangers. And I says to him, like, wow, it's like, incredible. And he's like, oh, it's, it's even better when you're walking out as a Rangers player to it. Yeah. And I was like, thinking about that. And then when I signed and I walked out that game at Elgin, I was like, right, now I know what he means. Like, it was... Mm. Did you get the full stadium behind you? I was like, it was unbelievable. And then, obviously, scoring and I'm singing my name and stuff. I was like, that's... What was it, see, like, going through third division and that and then League One, what what was the dressing room like? What was... Was it a... Because, obviously, you had, like, your Emils and Kabaris and stuff and then you've got the Lee McCullochs and that. What what was the dressing room like? Was it, was it a divide or was it, was it quite strong? Oh, it was... Obviously... The ones that spoke Spanish would kind of stick together a bit. Um, but we had like a, a good group of Scottish boys, like Kyle Hutton, who's he's hilarious. So he, he's a cracking boy, isn't he, man? He gets on with everybody. So even the foreigners, he, he's bringing everybody together. Uh, big Kevin Kyle came, who's a, a cracking big guy as well. He's quite funny. Yeah. Lee McCulloch's a funny guy. So and that year was, it was a good bunch of boys and obviously we're winning so it was like makes it easier when you're winning and then the next season brought in like Big Boy Day who's a good laugh Kenny Muller who's just he's a he's a money money guy but he's just a winner Aye. Um, so he, bring, he brought that type of mentality like a winning mentality which yeah. I think some people like one they used to the way he was Aye. I think he brought in a, a professionalism and, and winning mentality towards it as well have you got any memories of that, that, that deal with Sandaza getting wound up on the phone? Aye, it was Lee Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, felt, I felt sorry for Frank because he was a nice guy. T- tightest guy I've ever met in my life. Again, <laughs> by the way. We were injured one time. I went to a restaurant in St. Murray Park and we were, all putting, we were all putting my money in. And... Um, I think it was like a hundred pound or something that ended up there was a hundred and twenty there. So we're like, we'll leave that for a tip. He went and took his twenty back <laughs> and walked out so we didn't get a tip. <laughs> oh, you tight guy. It's but, not uh, what you earn, it's what you save. Uh, he's, that's the way he was. He used to wait on like he stayed near Nielsen Kabari as well. Aye. And Nielsen was injured one day. So he brought him in. But because Nielsen was injured, he had to stay in day waits in the afternoon. Fran sat at the front desk waiting on him for two hours. It's just so we could get a lift home. No way. <laughs> Very good. Two hours yeah. he just to get a lift home. Instead of just getting a taxi, he stayed in the West End. <laughs> Cost him about a tenner. <laughs> um, but no, nah, I, I remember obviously when that came out, I, fe- I felt sorry for him because like, like Ian Black, for example, had the, the gambling thing and stuff and, and he got away with that. Whereas it did me back Fran with his one. So... Uh, there was a lot. There was a lot of talk at the time that he was on too much money. Yeah. Brilliant. I think you know that's. I mean? a, but I think, I think he took them to court. Did they know and go, got his money? 
Do I, I think so. I think he took it to court and got his money. I've never heard anything about that, to be honest with you. It's never really been in the papers or anything. I don't well, think it has well, it. Actually, it might get softy to court. That's maybe why. Football draft exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the Angels food by Francisco Sanders. Aye, the injunction has uh, just been I'm well sure, fucked. I'm sure they made an agreement um, and he got, I think he got some of his money or missed his money anyway. Do you know injury, man? How much a impact you had in your career, David? I had obviously I started that season under Warburton. Aye. Um, and for, speaking to him before it, like I think he liked us. Um, and then it was St Mirren at home, just a block tackle. Aye. Um, I told my medial ligament, but it was like the deep part of my medial, so never ever got to the bottom to it until after I left Rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, so aye, that was a, a bit of a pain because if it got sorted there and then, then I. I'd have been out for probably four months and then mm. I probably had the last five months for the season to maybe earn a new contract or whatever. But as I was injured the full time, then you're never going to get anything. No. So, how did you go on my war? But I'm all right. Yeah, good. Uh, Pre season was brilliant. Just all football. Like, I, think we'd, I think we'd done one, one like just running. Um, the rest was football based. And yeah, these training, everything was very good. Like, just the thing I think that killed him at Rangers was he had no plan B. He used mm. to always say, Just like, plan A again. Uh, he says, oh, plan, plan B is the plan A better. And it was, I remember a pre season game, cut into the left and hit a shot. I think it was about 25 yards out. And he moaned at me for shooting to that distance. He says, always just to come back out and just pass a ball on the other side, keep people moving. And yeah. Even like there was one across as well, didn't he want you crossing the ball? He wanted you to come back out and keep it. So stuff like that, I think, can annoy fans. It was the same way I used to watch as well when I was injured. Um, went, I've went to a few games at Ibrox in the short corner. Used to do it constantly and I know fans used to hate it. Aye. Fans used to just want, now and again, a delivery put in, but he was always adamant in taking short corners. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why fans started to get annoyed as well. And did some of the players come back? Because obviously at Ibrox, you know, you you, you you duff up a pass. Ibrox fans are right, won't you? Was there players that were saying, man, that's fucking, you can't, they're hard, right hard when you hear them, you know? Yeah, it is. It's, it's tough. When things aren't going well, I remember times I would, the way I play, I, I'll try through passes. Like, I always try stuff. I mean, it wasn't coming off and the fans would moan at you. It's like, mm-hmm. like some people can be scared to get the ball again. Because they don't want to lose it. I don't want, don't want to hear that noise. Indy can be mentally very hard if it's not going well there. Mm-hmm. See, the thing is, it's not an easy place, man. When things aren't going right, it's it's a tough place, even oh, as a fan. When you hear some of the things, you'll be the same guy. When you go to the games right. and hear some of the fans, you're like... You my break. I've, I've heard it some... I've went back to a few games and even then, I hear it and I'm looking about and I'm thinking... Like, Aye. Some, sometimes it's not even anything bad and fans are like shouting abuse and I'm like oh sometimes we're like 2-3-0 up and fans that's are still right. going to be <laughs> that's, so that's just the way it is it's just a very different club and Aye. you know that when you're signing there definitely so how did you enjoy it when you moved to Hamilton under Martin Cannon how did you enjoy it there yeah it was good because I just came back from my knee and to be honest there wasn't anyone taking a gamble on me everybody thought I was finished so um, I got the phone call for the owner and he says he wanted me to come in and sign didn't want me to like, see me training or nothing so that was a bit of a relief like knowing that I was I was in there the pressure was off I didn't have to go in and try and impress straight away Aye. Um, I was able to get my fitness back gradually um, and the gaffer there was he was good with me um, gave me the time I needed to get like fit I think took a few weeks and then when I started to get some game time, they wanted them to keep me straight away. So, yeah, I was, I was obviously happy to sign another year there. Aye. So, she when, they, she when you like, had just come back for your injury, then you've got that phone call for Hamilton Ackies and you're like, ah, right, I'm going to go and sign for Hamilton Ackies. Did the plastic pitch come into it? Because you coming back for a serious knee injury like that, having to play on the plastic pitch week in, week out, did, was that a wee bit daunting for you? No, because to be honest, as I said, I had no other options. So I was like, this is my chance to, to get back playing 
if mm. I'd already had it in my head before all that that I was going to retire anyway. And, if and you're enjoying it, and you're enjoying your football now at Harlem. I've got a quick question about no, that's ask, right. your time down in England uh, at Bottom. Obviously, you, you played under Nigel Clough. Yeah. Um, it must be it must be mad like, playing under Clough with, with knowing who his dad was and what his dad achieved in the game. What was that like? Yeah, he was, I don't know, he was good. He was proper old school, I think, like his dad. Um, just my very first training session, I tried to chip the keeper him. He went mental at me. Hi. I tip like it was. I tried to chip him, and it was fine. Then I got the ball, same position, and scored. And he says to me, he's like, "That's what I want you to do." And then he just chip him. At, you try that again, you won't play for me and stuff. And I was like, "Right, okay, never chip that again." <laughs> but that's just the way he was. He was just like ruthless that way. Like as I say, I think his dad was the exact same. So he's just scored it for him. So, have you got any ambitions left in the game? Well, I don't know how long I have left, but I've signed another two years at Hamilton, so... What age are you? 31. Right. So, but well, I'm you're, you're, you're prime, mate. You're your prime. That's what I mean. So, I'm right. I'll have these two years, hopefully do well, and then potentially have another two of playing, and then I'm going to look to go into coaching at Hamilton. Um, oh, really? I'm start, yeah, I'm starting that um, th- this year, so... You still go to Largs for that, no? Yeah, it's, I think it's Largs. So I think I'll be next, next summer, I'll do my badge. Um, I don't know how it's working, but obviously this year's one. I don't know if, if that'll get put back to next year or whatever the place is. So I'll need to find out about that first. But yeah, looking to do that next or maybe even scouting. All right. Uh, scouting would be cool. Get yeah, I'd love to do that. But I think it's harder to get now because I think most teams are doing direct to the footballs. And right. I think they're the one that are signing the players now, so yeah, I don't oh, know how that will... it's changed a bit, hasn't it? Uh, it's totally different now, I think. <laughs> right, David. So every week on Football Daft, we put our guest football knowledge to the test with a 90 second quiz. You up for it? Let's go for it. <laughs> right. So the good doctor Kenny Jukers at the top of the leaderboard with 13, Barry Ferguson and Owen Coyle are just behind him on 12. Looking down the rest of the board, we've got Alan Archibald and Brian Prunty on 11, Murdo McLeod and Charlie Adam on 10, Ian Murray and Lauren Shankland on 7, Lee Miller, Jordan Young, Ross McCrory and Bob Malcolm are on 6, Frank McAvenny and Dick Campbell on 5, Peter Lovingkrans is on 3, and holding up the table is David McCracken, who's on 1. Is there anybody in that list you want to beat? David McCracken. Quite a safe sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You still want to be last. You don't care about anything else. No, no. <laughs> but the only thing is, man, you're not allowed to pass. You must give an answer. Right, okay. Right, Chris, you ready to ask your questions, my man? I'm going to be asking you the questions, Davey. So, your 90 seconds starts now. Who plays their home games at Borough Briggs? Elgin. Scott Booth is the current manager of what women's club? Celtic. Which club did Rangers get new signing Calvin Bassey from? Leicester. How many goals did you get for Wraith on loan? Four. Moritz Bauer was on loan at Celtic from which club? Stoke. What Scottish Premiership club changed their name in 1995? St Mirren. No idea. What colour of strips did Peterhead play their home games in? White. Who finished bottom of the Scottish Championship? Partick. Who was Craig Levine's assistant at Hearts before he stepped down? Austin McPhee. Who was in goals when he scored against Liverpool in the Europa League? Pepe Arena. Staggies are the nickname of which club? Ross County. Who signed Virgil van Dijk from Celtic? Neil Lennon. Who signed Virgil van Dijk from Celtic? From Celtic, sorry. Southampton. Who is the current manager of West Ham? David Moyes. How many caps did you get under 21? One. What is the name of Falkirk Stadium? Fourth Bank? No, it's not. Who is the only player to win more than 100 caps for Scotland? Time! Can you help him out there, but Chris? We're going, no. 
who signed Virgil right. van Dijk for Celtic? Right. <laughs> no, no, I think he's missed, he missed out the question. I, did, uh, yeah. I don't know if that's... Because then I, I, I was, thought, then I then thought, I was like, no, it was Ronnie Dyler. Like, <laughs> yeah. Still I still it. think he should get the, David should get the chance to answer that because Chris asked the question. At the end now, when you say time, John, would you? Yeah, go for it. We've waited, we gave Owen Coyle 25 seconds oh. extra the other week, so I, <laughs> well, I, I was thinking the goalkeeper, I was going to go Jim Layton. Right, okay. Right. I don't think it's like a bad shout. Right, let's go through the wrong answers then, David. Not bad, you got through a hell of a lot of questions there. Um, you started to stumble, you flew, flew through the first lot, uh, you started to stumble, which what Scottish Premiership Club changed their name in 1995? It was Livingston. They were obviously Meadowbank Thistle beforehand. Oh. Scott Booth was the manager of Glasgow City, not Celtic. Uh, let's have a look down the rest of them. Virgil van Dijk, you got right. David Moyes, you got right. Now, I've got down, you got two caps at under 21 level. Is that right? On your Wikipedia page, it says you got two. <laughs> you made I just one. I thought I was just Iceland at home. I think we've got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, we always go with that. Wikipedia is always wrong, so we'll give you that as an extra point. Then. I don't uh, think that's the only game I came on, was Iceland at home. Right. Uh, name of the Falkirk Stadium is the Falkirk Stadium. Um, and it was Kenny Dalglish who got 100 caps for Scotland, the only Scottish put to do that. Not bad, mate. You're up there. You're on 11 points. Oh! oh nice. Does that mean he's joint third or third? Uh, he he is, that's what I was wanting. Joint, joint third guy. We Alan Archibald and Brian Prunty. Brilliant. Take that. Good shout. Keep David, thanks for joining us, mate. Ah, oh, thanks for having us. Enjoy that. It's now time for our Beer 52 teaser. For your chance to win a case of beer, all you have to do is answer the question that we put to you last week. We asked you, who was the only Scot to play against England without winning an international cap? I bet was that Andy Gorham for, for uh, cricket? No, it had to be football. Oh, I might know the answer to this. That I usually turns up fucking everywhere, doesn't it? Uh, that usually turns up everywhere. The answer we were looking for was Lee Bullion, who played for a Hong Kong select against England in the lead up to Euro 96. But there was another answer as well. Apparently, Stuart Scullion played for Team America alongside Pelé and Bobby Moore against England in 1976. That was my... Yeah! That so was my fault. I, I thought it was only Lee Bullen was the only one that had done that. Uh, but uh, I, Stuart Scullion, as all the listeners pointed out, also did it in 1976. So two Scots didn't get capped for uh, Scotland, but played against England. Didn't How you? did somebody even know that? It's um, unbelievable. I, I had no idea. So congratulations to Rob Harvey. You have won it, my man. Get in there. Okay, this week's question is... Which Englishman played in the 1989 Scottish Cup final and the 1992 FA Cup final? I know who mm. that is. Well, you need to look up who played in the Scottish Cup final in 1989 and try and gauge it for there. But you can enter by comment on the link in the Football Daft F- Facebook page or you can tweet your answer to at Football Daft Pod. Winners must be over 18 and stay in the UK and you can get free beer from Beer 52 as well. It's a monthly subscription service for beer which they source from some of the greatest small batch breweries around the world. They theme cases every month. Previous themes including Germany, South Africa, Korea, New Zealand and many, many more. All you need to do is go to beer52.com forward slash daft and we can sort out free beers if you just cover the full 95 postings. So just go to beer52.com slash daft. That's the word beer and the numbers 52.com to get your first case of eight beers for free. Right, troops, we've come to the end of another episode. Had a good laugh, eh? Aye, it was good, man. David Teppert was good. I like the way he was telling the stories. He just, he just, think, you know what I mean? He... He was laid back, wasn't he? Aye. He was laid back. I don't think he was this good as play those Legends Lottery, though, was he? <laughs> I mean, that guy was something else, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> folk, folk thought that Owen Coyle could talk, but David Temple, Templeton can talk and all, can't he? I can. Did he shot man? No, he was good. A good way. And a good no, way. he was really, really good. That story about the about Vladimir Romanov taking his piss. <laughs> it's so David Brent, man. <laughs> it's brilliant, it's brilliant. I could just see him walking out of the stadium, man, going like that. Probably doesn't even know who Temple's name is, man. Walking about going, where's that wee guy's boots? There's a fight. <laughs> walking out. 
Aye, <laughs> but the best part is he probably didn't even go out to the pitch straight away. He <laughs> probably went to his office with the Fitbit boots on and that. Get a wee bit of business done and then went out for a kick about it. Oh, that's brilliant, man. Hey, right, Troops, my boys, not my year here saying he's hungry. I need to go there, I need to sit in the hot tub. Okay, right. Wait a minute, I've oh. got to tell you about my big draft story. Tell it next week, yeah. mate. Tell us next week, mate. Aye. Tell us next week. Aye. I've been Graham Steveley, aka Gredo. I've been Chris Toll, aka that wee Fanny. <laughs> Play the tune trips. The... Is it Dana? Audio Frontier.